refining skin tone using the super contrast tool is going to be our topic, our Luminar AI topic, starting now. Hi again, I'm Fidelli, and let's see what we can accomplish in 10 minutes or less working with the super contrast tool along with some of the portrait tools. Now, here's a great photo of fellow photographer uh, Jeff Goldberg. I took this at ClickCon. What I want to do is I'm going to dive right down here to the super contrast tool. Now, unlike the regular contra the highlight tool where we're just working on highlights, super contrast lets you adjust highlights, midtones, and shadows. So here we are with the highlights. I'm going to drag this over to the right. And notice when I do that, look how it's restoring some of the detail in his skin. It's bringing back some of the color and the contrast. And here's where I can balance it. Look at that. Now it looks even. I'll leave the other two for now because I really don't need to work on the midtones or the, the shadows. I like where this is. So I have this, this set. Now let's continue with the edit. All right. So I'm going to come up here to Enhance AI. And like I've always said, Accent AI, Accent AI is my number one tool. Look at this. It automatically improves color, detail, tone, and depth of an image. So I have that set. I like it. Now let's come down to the light tool. This is where we could use the highlight here, but the super contrast gave us more flexibility. What I do want to come down to and adjust is the black tones, make them a little richer, and increase the white tone just a bit. Smart contrast is always nice to add. Great. Now look at this. So I have it all set. I do want to come down to details and add just a bit of detail to the image. That looks great. Now, since this is a portrait, let's come down here to the portrait tools and let's see what the portrait tools are going to do for us. I'm going to zoom in on the face. Notice the, the, the light was a little harsh and he's not wearing makeup. So we're going to get a lot of reflectiveness in his skin. So what I want to do is I'm going to come down here to skin. Actually, yeah, let's come down to skin first and let's remove some of that shine. Look at that. Notice when I drag that side to the right, look at how much of that shine is removed. And I'm just going to touch his skin up just a little. He's a male, so I'd rather his skin not be uh, porcelain glassy looking. So that looks good there. His eyes already look incredible. But let's come over here and enhance the eyes just a little bit more. And let's see if there's any dark circles under his eyes. Just a little. Look at that. Just a little bit. All right. Let's see the results. This is before. That's after. Look at this. So here's the original image that we started with. Look at his face. Look at the detail in the skin. Ready? And that's what we're going to convert it to. Now. While I was editing this at, in Chicago, Jeff did mention, hey, is there anything you can do about the beard? If you notice with the catch light, there was a light underneath him. So that light is illuminating his beard here. So for that, let's come over to the local mask. But let me show you how I figured this out. If we come back up here to the light tool, my first instinct was to take this highlight, the watch close, and drag it to the right and look how it made the beard look great but I didn't like what it did to the rest of the face so let's leave that where it's at and instead let's use the local masking and I'll click on add basic now here's where we have that same tool highlighter or highlights let's drag it it did the exact same thing as the light tool did but the difference is, I'm going to mask it. I'm going to click on the paint paintbrush, and I'm just going to paint in the areas that I want 
that to be affected. And there it is. So I'll turn it on and off. So there it is without the effect. And there it is in a moment with it. There it is. All right, now, just to finish this off, we can come over here to vignette. And I want to bring this in just a bit because down here is a little too bright for me. And I'm going to choose where I want it to start. And I want it to start right there. Oh, look at that. And dial it in. There we have it. All right, so here we go. Ready? Before, which was still a good picture, to the enhancement here. Now, I did create... This is a template. So out of the other images we took, what I can do is this. If I go to templates, and here he is. I created it. I could click on it, and it instantly adds what we just did. Now, because this is cropped differently for quality control, I'd go back and change it up a bit. But that has the same effect here. That's one way of doing it. Another way is I can select the image that I just did and then control or command A, select all the images. And since this is highlighted right from here, double click or right click rather, adjustment. And I can synchronize the adjustment. Now the, the changes we made to this one image will be applied to all of them. All right. Hey, let's check out some of the comments. One moment. And here we are. All right, hello everyone. Glad to see you. Um, nice to have you guys joining us today. What I'll do is this. I'm going to stick around into the chat. Um, and if you have any questions about the Super Contrast tool, please let me know and I'll try to answer them. And if you're watching this afterwards, leave comments and we come back through and we'll check out some of the questions. And as always, if you have suggestions for future shows, please let us know. Well, guys, thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you at the next coffee break.